It's only January and I think we've already got a good contender for the best looking boat of the year. It is the new Azimut S7. It's the Mark II version that has been in S7 before, but this is the first S range boat to be designed by Alberto Mancini. It's got triple IPS, it uses carbon fibre in the structure. There's loads to enjoy, so let's go and check it out. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Right, starting here at the transom then, this style of boat, sports bridges, a lot of them have got tender garage, the Sunseeker Sport Yacht, the Princess S-Class range, similar to this, most of the time the tender is kept inside a garage, and it's the same on this, you can get a Pirelli J33 in there, alongside a jet ski, we can't open it unfortunately because of the design of the stand, but trust me, they will fit in there. We've also got a hydraulic bathing platform, which of course is kept clear. I mean, this boat's got a sea bob on it just for demonstration purposes, but most of the time this is kept clear and just to be used when you're coming in and out of the water. It just keeps all your toys all nicely tucked away inside that area. If we move up into the cockpit itself, this is actually quite a narrow little staircase. It's a little bit of a squeeze to get up here, but then once you're in, this is a really great space. Of course, because it's the sports bridge, this is quite short. You haven't got an enormous overhang on boats of this style, but you have got a sunshade that comes out of here and that will come out and offer some protection to this area here. This massive sunbathing space where you've got these headrests that are on gas ramps. So they just pop up like this one is here and then you can just push them back down again and it's completely flat. And the table here opens up this way so that this end of the table meets up here with the sunbathing area. So this is a nice flexible space it does feel really big actually and you move onto the side decks without a step so it's very easy to move here either side symmetrical deck spaces on this boat and then you're up heading forward towards the foredeck and i like the inclusion of these wings here they offer you a bit of lighting as well spot for them to put some led strip lighting in get a bit of protection but it's a nice safe side deck to walk down these are nice and high you haven't actually got railings if you get a bit further forward, but I like the fact you've got this break here on both sides that if you're side two on a fuel pontoon, for example, then you can get off really easily. You don't always have to go down to the back of the boat. And on a sports bridge, as I've said this before when I've reviewed sports bridge boats, this area is even more important because of course your flybridge isn't as big as a traditional flybridge boat. So this no doubt will become a really popular area, especially when it's as well designed is this of course you've got the walkthrough area but what i like is there's no steps in this area at all even right forward to the bow part of this design the mancini design is that slightly flatter bow area and that just makes it very easy to move around this area whether you're lying around enjoying the sun or or crewing the boat so you move into here and this is a nice sociable space you've got the table here in the middle good amount of shade from this canopy overhead where you've got the poles that that drop in here you've got a repeater for your Fusion stereo, you've got cup holders, you've got these little fabric trays where you can drop your phone and your loose items. It's a really nice place to chill out, I imagine. And this is quite a nice feature. So this is currently, as you can see, set up like a bench facing back into this area, but the whole thing flips over like that. So you can extend this sunbathing space and you've got these nice chunky handles to grab onto as well. That's quite a simple bit of design, but it just, again, adds to the functionality of this area. Of course, everything's mirrored on the starboard deck, exactly the same as the other side, apart from the fact you've got the helm on this side. There's no side door, but you have got a window here, so you can get a bit of ventilation, you can communicate with your crew, bark orders up to the anchor, but no door, so the person driving the boat can't get out onto the side deck, they're going to have to come to the back of the cockpit and come out that way. Here, incidentally, is access to the crew cabin. We'll have a proper look at that later on, but that is how you get into the crew space on this boat. Nice big door here on the starboard deck. And one final thing to mention, this boat hasn't actually got it, but if you were to have the third station here in the cockpit, this is where it would go. So you'd have your joystick here. Of course, this is a triple IPS boat, so joystick control comes as standard. This is where you'd have that if it was an option. This boat hasn't got it fitted, but if it did have it, this is a nice place to have it. Let's stay on deck then and head up to the sports bridge. Now I talk about the importance of the fore deck because the fly bridges are smaller on boats of this style, but actually this is a pretty decent sized fly bridge for a sports bridge boat. You don't feel like you're losing out on too much really. You've still got a huge amount of very comfortable seating. You've got this massive table 
that I can't fold over now because of the plastic topiary, but it does come over over this way. You've got a two-way backrest here, so this is in travel mode, but then you can flip this this way and it just extends that sun pad a bit like it does downstairs. And there are some cup holders to hand as well, so when you're charging along, you're not going to spill your drink anywhere. Obviously, you've got the wet bar up here. It's not huge, but it's well designed. The quality of that lid says a lot about the way Azimut builds its boats. And this is a bugbear of mine that they haven't fallen into, not having the grill within easy reach of the sink. There's no point of having them there if they're completely separate makes cleaning them very difficult. Not an issue here on the S7. And you've got a bit of storage space down here, fridge down here, all the usual stuff. I imagine if you threw enough money at them, they'd stick an ice maker in there as well, if you wanted one. No hard top on this version. There may be a version later on with a hard top, but I sort of hope they don't do it because this is such a well-balanced, good-looking boat, and I think a hard top would unbalance it. But you have got a fabric bimini here you can see it's tucked forward there up at the windscreen that just comes up and offers a nice bit of shade over this area when it's really really hot and then obviously a key feature is having your helm up here the driving experience is a really important part of what this boat is about and this is a really nice position there are three screen sizes you can have this is a medium sized garmin screen they look a little bit lost on that dash pod i'd go for the bigger ones if it was mine but at least you've got two of them, so you can split the information across both. Apart from that, it's a really nice, clean, tidy helm position. Nice to have separate seats so people can get comfortable independently. They've got bolster sections. And I like the fact that you've got the throttles and the joystick out on the print. They sort of come out towards the skipper so they're nice and close. You're not having to lean forward to reach the major controls. And I think, no, I thought maybe you could just see the aft end of the bathing platform there. You can't, hence why that third station down in the cockpit is probably going to be quite popular. Those are the deck spaces then. Let's head and see the interior. One of the key features of the S7 is the way that these areas blend into each other. They've actually moved the galley forward from the previous model. That had a galley aft layout. The galley is now right forward on this boat. This screen comes all the way over here, so the doors all slide to one side, so you have this unbroken link between these two seating areas and then opposite that you have a small wet bar because the galley's all the way all the way in there you have got a wet bar here so everything falls easy to hand you could have a grill here if you wanted obviously you've got your sink and there's a fridge under here as well so yeah everything you need right by the table if you want to serve your guests outside and i like the fact you've got these nice bits of glass here that are going to offer really good protection from the breeze it's a really breezy day and you can sit in this corner and everybody is going to be pretty well protected but let's head inside now this is the first collaboration Azimut's actually done with a firm called Yotique. They did the interior design here. They're actually owned by Azimut Bonetti Group, but they've not been deployed on an Azimut until now. And I really like it. Azimut have been a little bit wayward with some of their interiors recently. I think this hits the right notes in pretty much every way. It's stylish, it's different, it's imaginative, but it looks really cool and it's functional. So these tables, for example, they are on motorized pedestals, so they will come up to make a dining table, and then you can open them as well so that they join to make one table. You can drop them down again, and they go into a sort of coffee table arrangement, much more relaxed, and you can walk between them. So it's very easy for people to get in and out from this seating area. It would be a little bit uncomfortable if you weren't aligning with these cushions, but apart from that, it's a really nice looking space. Over on this side, it's all practical storage. So behind this mirrored section here, we have glassware. We've also got access to the button that puts the TV up and down, that's in there as well. And then we've got storage under here, but this is dedicated storage for crockery. Plates and stuff are in there. You've got your cups in here, all azimut branded, but they're held in individual slots. It's all rubberized, so they shouldn't rattle around when the boat's out at sea. Now, another journalist described this as a posh feeding trough. I'm not going to name any names, but he did, and I sort of agree. It does look like that, but it is nice and stylish as well. It's a sort of typical quirky azimuth feature, and behind that, that is where the TV pops up from. And then you notice the windows. They are absolutely huge. So the views out when you're not stuck inside a shed in northern Germany should be pretty good. And again, the difference with the layout here is the fact the galley's right forward, and... This is quite a traditional way of designing a main deck, but I think it works really well. If you're doing long, slow passages, which this boat might do, and it's not designed for them, but it might do them, being next to the galley so you can quickly make a snack or a drink 
is no bad thing. And you've got a great view here. You're forward, you can see through the windscreen. It's all on one level. Even though you're not at the back of the boat, there's still a really nice connection to the people who are sitting out there. It's well designed as well. So you haven't got full height fridge freezers, but under here, you've got big chest fridge and freezers. You've got a nice deep sink. This is a fake marble, but it certainly looks the part. Induction cooking. You've got an extractor fan down here, but you've also got ventilation mirrored on both sides. You've got an electric window on both sides. Again, just helps get those cooking smells out of the boat. Loads of storage down here. And it's all really stylishly done. I particularly like the headlining. This wood looks really good and it really cleverly disguises the air conditioning vents as well. You'd never know they're in there. It's really effective. And this wave pattern that you get is really, really cool. And then we have the lower helm. And you think it might play second fiddle on a sports fridge, but this is actually a really good space. This pod style helm that seems to sprout out of nowhere. Again, the screens are a little bit small for my liking, but you can have bigger ones if you prefer, but it's a really engaging driving environment. These are fully adjustable, these seats, but I like that I can stand. I can see the bow. The throttles are really close to me. I've got a fantastic all round view. This is a really good alternative if the weather isn't good enough to drive upstairs. Let's quickly talk about performance, shall we? Because that is an important part of what the S7 is all about. And it's got triple IPS 1050s, 800 horsepower a piece. Top speed, 35 knots, and you can cruise it anywhere between 25 and 30, quite comfortably where you'll probably have 250 to 300 nautical miles of range. Of course, we need to put all of that to the test and they've got some pretty wild efficiency claims too. And we will do that when we see trial the boat later in the year. So keep an eye out for that one. Now though, let's go and check out the accommodation. The companionway curves down from by the helm to this lower deck. And then if you head amidships, you are into the realms of the owner's cabin, which really is quite something. They not only changed the orientation from the previous model where the bed was sort of tucked in the corner and how it runs across and gives you that full walk around effect, but I just love the style and the detailing. It's not too much, it's playful, it's imaginative, but it really is quite special. It feels different to anything else in this sector, really. I think it's fantastic. And talking of the practical side, I don't think there's a boat of this style at this size with a bigger walk-in wardrobe than this one. It's absolutely huge, safe in there, shelving, loads of hanging space. It's absolutely brilliant. Really nice big bathroom as well. And it's got this quite funky effect where you've got this sort of blacked out glass here and then it fades so you can see through it at the top. So you can just sit at the top of someone's head when they're having a shower. Again, it's all just a bit of fun. Like the side trays which mirror the feeding trough from upstairs. Television pops up from back here, there's a button down by the bureau, so you've got a pop-up TV that comes up here. And again, I just like the detailing of the sofa, the little table down here. Yeah, it's nice, they, they've judged it really nicely. But this is not, of course, the only accommodation on this deck. Moving forward, we have got quite a lot of storage, actually. I forgot to mention there's some on the way down on the staircase. There's a nice big bit of shelving here as well, just useful extra space. Here, we've got washers, dryers conveniently located amongst all the cabins, so everyone gets them really easily. And then three quite big steps leading forward where we get to the guest accommodation. So to the starboard side, you have a bunk cabin here. The bunks are actually arranged in an L shape, but they are a decent size and there's a good amount of storage under the top one as well. On this side, we have a twin. This is a nice size. You can walk between the beds very easily. Headroom is good and it's ensuite. That is the day heads. So it's gonna be sharing with people using it in the day. It's also shared with the cabin over the lobby, but it has got its own private access. And then right forward, we have the VIP, the best guest cabin. And what they've done here is push the cabin right to the extremes to really maximize the amount of space in here. So you get a really good sized double bed, but it's set nice and low, easy to climb in and out, hanging wardrobes on both sides. And this cabin does have a private ensuite that no other cabins have access to. It's not enormous, it's tucked in the corner there. Again, the geometry is very clever, but it is a nice private space for your guests to be able to use. The last places we need to look at then are the crew cabin and the engine room. It's more likely I'd imagine that this type of boat is going to be owner run rather than crewed, especially compared to an equivalent full size flybridge boat. It has got a crew cabin and it's decent enough. You won't want to be in here for ages and ages, but you've got a berth down here. You've got a Pullman berth up here as well. So you can sleep two people in here though. That would be incredibly cozy. There is an open plan sink over there, but you've got a separate shower cubicle, of course. So you have got all the facilities you need down here. It's just not particularly spacious. 
Access is quite simple down to the engine room. You've got this hatch here in the cockpit and then a ladder that brings you down to three engines. A slightly unusual sight, but we all know this is what the S7 is built on. As I thought, in terms of performance efficiency, it was the best way to go. But it does mean that you've got to pack three engines into an engine room. You've also got to service three engines and three pods. So that is going to add to the cost. Adding the fact you've got the tender garage as well, which obviously encroaches on this space. It isn't huge, but actually it's easy enough to get to the bits that you really need to get to, especially things like ancillaries such as air conditioning and your generators. It's all pretty accessible, though it's not as big as a space that's only having to look after two engines. So there you go, that's the Azimut S7. Not really where it's designed to be inside the shed. And as I said, we are hoping to catch up with this thing in the water in Italy and give it a proper sea trial. So look out for that video coming down the line. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please give it a like if you did. If you want to watch more videos from us, click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe, click here. Thanks for watching.